Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking you through my survival guide for shopping on the Goldhawk Road, although this would apply to any kind of fabric district that you go shopping in, I would think. I'm definitely no expert. I've been to the Goldhawk Road about four or five times now. The last two times I didn't buy anything because I was on a fabric buying ban. I was well impressed with myself. But I have come up with some ways that I know exactly what fabric I want to buy and where it is for the next time I go. So I'm not sure it technically counts, but at the time, self-restraint, I was impressed with myself. Tip number one, to set yourself a budget. I would also then take that budget out in cash. I find that it's very easy to get spend happy on my card. I have done that at the shows in the past and then just kind of sat down and worked it all out and put it together how much I've spent and nearly had a heart attack. Now, if you have some wiggle room with that, all the, all the shops on the Goldhawk Road do take cards, but I find having cash in my hand rather than just my card, it's much more real the amount of money that I am spending. And ask me how I know. I have been to the shows and spent it all on my card, got home and, and, and worked out how much it was and nearly had a heart attack. So actually spending physical cash for me is a very good way of me asking that other question is, do I really want this? Whereas with the card, I'm like, oh yeah, must must have, must have. Whereas cash, it's like, oh, I'm, near, I'm running out. Do I really want this? Tip number two is don't be afraid to haggle. Now, some of the shops will be up for that and some of them will not be. And it's one of those things that you kind of need to judge it. Especially if you have cash, you have more buying power than cards. Cards cost shops money to accept. Whereas cash is, no, it's free to accept they just have to deposit it into the bank, which they do charge for, but it's a lot cheaper for a shop to take cash than it is for them to take card. So you do have a little bit more wiggle room if you are spending cash in person with them. Some shops will, like I say, be up, up for haggling and some will give you deals and some shops will definitely not. I bought some faux fur from the Goldhawk Road the very first time that I went. I only wanted 1.5 meters square and it was that wide and they had a length that was two meters long. It was 55 pounds per meter and they wanted me to buy the entire two meters and I was saying to them well I only need one and a half so you know can you do me a deal on that last 50 centimeters and they were absolutely adamant that they weren't going to do that so I bought the 1.5 meters which is what I wanted and they ended up with a very strange 50 centimeter cut of faux fur which would be great for collars and stuff like that and I could have used it for that it wasn't what I needed and they weren't willing to haggle so I went with the set price which was on offer. I have been into other shops and I have bought 10 meters of fabric because I had customers that had fallen in love with it and I got a really good discount because I was buying in bulk and also because I was paying in cash. Now buying in bulk is not always going to be an option but if there are a couple of you there and you both happen to like a fabric think about buying one length together and splitting it up later you may be able to get yourself a slightly better deal. I know haggling can be one of those things that people are just like oh no I couldn't do that couldn't do that and uh, if that's not your bag that's not a problem the prices along the Gold Hawk Road tend to be fairly reasonable anyway and you can get some absolute bargains there. But if you're feeling brave, definitely give haggling a go. Tip number three is if you find a fabric you like, take a photo of that fabric and then take a photo of the storefront that you found it in. So for example, I found this absolutely amazing Gucci silk and I then went outside and took a photo of the shop that I found that silk in. So I find that if you take a photo of the fabric first and then the store that you found it in, that you're not taking a photo of every single shop as you go along and then trying to work out afterwards which fabrics belong to which. I found this really useful though we when we went shopping last time there were a couple of people who were umming and ahhing about certain fabrics and as we kind of went past them the shop on the other side of the street they decided that yes they did want it but we knew exactly where it was for them to go back to and believe me all those shops do kind of blend into one so having a reference as to what fabric you found and where you found it will be invaluable especially if like me you were on a fabric buying ban when you went and you couldn't buy any fabric but you want to go back and get it now that you're not on a fabric buying ban I have all of the references to all of the fabrics and I know where they are. That's not always going to work. Obviously the turnover of stock can be quite high on the Goldhawk Road so I may go back and they may not be available but at least I know where they were rather than having to trawl through every single shop although that doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world so you know there's that. Tip number four, take bags that will fit over your shoulder. I have loads of these and you can fit a surprising amount in these things. You can make your own obviously of course but what you want is a bag that will fit 
over your shoulder rather than the carrier bags, the plastic carrier bags that they give you. Number one, plastic carrier bags are single use plastics, so we don't want any more of those. And number two, when you have lots of them, they dig into your hands and are, are uncomfortable to carry. Whereas if you put shoulder bags over your shoulders, you can impersonate a Sherpa much, much more comfortably than if you were trying to carry it in just your hands ask me how I know. Fabrics get heavy and having to carry it all around here is not good. Also, if you have bags that go over your shoulders like this, your hands are free for touching and feeling and stroking all the new fabrics in the new shops that you come to. So there's that. Now, if you have a giant budget or if you're planning on buying coating fabrics or things like that, think about taking a wheelie bag or a wheelie trolley. I know that can, that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but if you're coming from far away like I do, and you've got to think about getting these things home, the other thing you need to think about is, again, if you're buying coating fabric, they can be very bulky and very heavy, and having to carry that over your shoulder, as much as a shoulder bag is nice, can get a little bit painful here. So you maybe want to think about having a little wheelie trolley that you can pack it all into and drag it along behind you. Slightly less convenient, but much, much better for your shoulders and your back. Ask me how I know. Tip number five is make a plan and bring patterns with you. The last time I went, I went with a group of lovely girls and Jane bought four patterns with her that she wanted to make up and it was a really good reference point because she knew the types of fabric she was looking for, she knew exactly how much she needed, in, unlike me who basically stands there and goes, hang on a minute, I just need to look up online and see how, how much fabric I need for this one. I mean, obviously this isn't going to work if you are more of a sort of buy the fabric first and then decide what to make with it. Having your phone and the internet available does make looking up pattern or fabric requirements for patterns much easier than uh, having to ring the husband and say, can you just find this pattern in my stash and tell me what it says on the back? Or if you're a super organized person, you may have already put all of your patterns into an online database. And in that case, you can very easily scroll through and find the patterns that you want. But for me and for Jane, it was very, very useful to have those envelopes there with the amounts that we needed, the types of fabrics that they needed, the stretch amounts that they needed, all those kind of things right there at her fingertips. And it also helped focus her search. So that was a really, really good way of kind of narrowing down what types of fabric she was looking for because it can get incredibly overwhelming. That's one of the things that I've heard from people who go to Mood Fabrics or the di Garment District in New York. They go without a plan just to go and have a look and it, they don't come away with anything because it's just so large and it's just so huge and there's just so much choice that they haven't got a clue where to start and it's more about getting overwhelmed than it is about enjoying the fabrics and looking for specific things. So have a plan in mind. Think about what you want to make. Think about the types of fabrics that you enjoy making and then maybe if you want to push yourself there are some beautiful beautiful slippery silks and things available so have have a rough idea in your head of what you would like to come away with from the gold walk road unless you're like me and on a fabric band and you didn't come away with anything I mean can you actually see the halo glowing can you <laughs> As I say, I'm definitely no expert, but these are the few little tips and tricks that I have picked up from the last few times that I have been, and some of the things that I wish I had thought about before I got there, especially the plastic bag thing with the heavy faux fur, and also a coating that I found, and then a cotton sateen, and then something else as well. And then I had to go and visit a friend in South, uh, South London, and I had to get on a bus and a tube, and oh my goodness, I wish I'd had a wheelie bag or the shoulder bags. Again, ask me how I know. As I mentioned, these tips and tricks will, will work for any kind of fabric shopping district that you end up going to. Uh, if you are visiting from abroad, uh, it might be slightly more difficult to maybe have a spare wheelie trolley, but you can always buy one of those. Not that I am trying to enable you or make you buy lots and lots of fabric. I don't know who I'm kidding. Buy lots and lots of fabric and show me and, and let me live vicariously through you please. All of these tips and tricks will work wherever you are going shopping but for me it's generally the Gold Hawk Road. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!